What's up everybody, Mike for CMCC Builds here with character build number 6, Wanda Maximoff the Scarlet Witch. I've had a lot of requests for various builds over the last couple of weeks, all of them great, and most of them are now in the queue and I will 100% get to them. But all of my builds to this point have been martial builds with the extra attack feature. So for this build I wanted a character that diverges from that archetype, someone who didn't use a sword or a blaster, but instead could fit more of that pure caster mold. And to be honest, ever since she nearly soloed Thanos in Endgame, I wanted to find a build that worked for Wanda, but I haven't been satisfied with what I've seen out there. So because of that, and the awesome power we saw in WandaVision, along with the Multiverse of Madness coming out in a few months, this was kind of the perfect time for a Scarlet Witch build. Quick caveat, the Wanda we see in WandaVision, and will likely see in Doctor Strange 2, possesses insane amounts of power. Some level 20 Dungeons and Dragons builds can approach god tier status, they can reshape reality and warp the fabric of existence, but not to the degree that Wanda can and does in both the comics and the MCU. But we're gonna get as close as possible. With that preamble out of the way, let's get into the build. For our race, Wanda is a human. Originally she was considered a mutant, but in the MCU and later comics she was the product of experimentation. So variant human or custom lineage are both great fits. For our needs, custom lineage's plus two works better for us, so we'll go with that. With a medium size, we'll place that plus two into intelligence. We're not going the charisma route. For the feet, there are so many good feats for this build, you almost can't go wrong. But I would strongly suggest taking one of the half feats, especially the newer ones, because they will bump our intelligence to 18 right at level one and the abilities from those feats are generally solid to quite strong. Before we choose, let's think about who Wanda actually is. Pre-WandaVision, Maximoff is a telepath, but she doesn't really communicate to others via telepathy. It's more of a feel or images of people's thoughts type of thing. Sort of similar to the telepathy in Star Wars, where it's based more around emotions than language. She can also influence people's minds, their thoughts, their actions. She's telekinetic. She moves things with her mind, big things, and strong, superpowered beings. And we later learned that prior to Hydra's experimentation with the Mind Stone, she had some basic magical abilities, specifically probability hexes, which also happens to be her primary ability in the comics when we first meet her. She can change the likelihood of positive things happening to her or negative things happening to enemies, but she doesn't know how or even if it'll work. So we really can't go wrong here, but I'm suggesting we take the telekinetic feat with the plus one to intelligence. We get the mage hand cantrip for free, we can make it invisible, or we can flavor the hand to look like scarlet red chaos magic. And of course, we get the very solid bonus action ability, which allows us to telekinetically shove a creature within 30 feet if they fail a strength save. Don't forget that creatures can willingly fail the save, so it works great to get allies out of danger or opportunity attack range. For the variable trait, we will not have dark vision on this character. Wanda cannot see in the dark, so we'll take a skill proficiency. We'll take perception here. Between Age of Ultron and Civil War, Wanda trains with Black Widow and Captain America at the Avengers compound, and she actually gains a ton of skills that we see indirectly throughout the films. Here she applies her observational spy skills learned from Natalia during that time. Perception perfectly encompasses that ability. For the additional language, Wanda definitely speaks at least two languages given that she's from Sokovia and English is her second language, so pick whichever works for you and your campaign. For our class, you've probably seen other Scarlet Witch builds that go with Sorcerer, and given our racial and feat-based ability score bumps to this point, you probably figured out that we're not going with Sorcerer. I know that Wanda uses Chaos Magic and there is a Sorcerer subclass, the Sorcerer Origin Wild Magic. As I mentioned earlier, early comic book Wanda uses Hex Magic that was unpredictable and not always helpful to Wanda and D&D's wild magic features have an unpredictable magic feel, but this doesn't apply to later versions of the Scarlet Witch, and certainly not to the MCU Wanda. At no point does she try to cast a hex bolt and instead drops a fireball on herself, or tries to mind control a person and instead summons a bunch of flumps. There's just nothing like that or even remotely close to that in Wanda's MCU history. But what about something like the Aberrant Mind Sorcerer? And I will say this is much, much closer to the Scarlet Witch, but none of the abilities actually give us something we can't get elsewhere, or fill needed gaps in the build. This becomes especially true when we start digging into WandaVision Scarlet Witch, who becomes a fabricator of reality. So with all that said, we're going to start with Fighter, of course. First, this gives us proficiency in constitution saves, which is great for any spellcaster because of the need to protect concentration on so many spells and effects. In addition, we actually want to get to our subclass as soon as realistically possible. So this isn't just a tiny dip in the fighter. I know that sounds crazy, but it's kind of mandatory for the build. We're going to solve some decent sized gaps in the build this way, and it will synergize quite well in the end. 
For our two skill proficiencies, there isn't anything critical to the build or the Scarlet Witch character, so go with whatever works for you. I would consider taking Survival, given that Wanda was able to survive two days in a collapsed building with her brother. Does that make her a decent tracker in the woods? Nope. So it's a bit of a stretch for me. I'll take Acrobatics, because Wanda is constantly being blasted and tossed all around, and she seems to always come up aces, so she has a decent ability to roll with the blows, so to speak. And I'll take Intimidation, because when she goes full Scarlet Witch, she's a complete badass. We get second win for a little bonus action heal. Wanda doesn't really ever heal herself in the MCU, so it's not a perfect fit, but that said, I personally wouldn't hesitate to use the ability. And finally, we get a fighting style. And boy, do these choices not work well for a character like this. We're not using weapons, so all the weapon options are out. She's not fighting blind or in the dark or wearing armor, so we can't even use blind fighting or defense options. And she doesn't wear a shield, so interception and protection are out. That basically leaves us with superior technique or unarmed fighting. Superior technique can work. There are some options, especially now with the out of combat maneuvers available to Battlemasters, that would help boost some skill checks. But I'm going with unarmed fighting. I know, we're building Wanda Maximoff and we're a level 1 fighter using our bare hands to bash people and that's definitely not Scarlet Witch. Except it turns out that part of Wanda's Avenger compound training with Black Widow was learning hand-to-hand -hand combat, which is how she's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Proxima Midnight during the Vision attack. The key difference here is that Wanda uses balls of magical energy as sort of psionic-powered brass knuckles during her fights. Taking this fighting style brings our unarmored strikes from zero damage to a D8 and flavored as chaotic magical energy fueled punch is, I think that works. You're still hitting with strength, which is terrible, so hits are not likely, so don't go wading into melee throwing haymakers. Because of that, level 1 is going to be rough for us. Maybe grab a ranged weapon, move people with your bonus action, and just don't get killed. For ability scores, using the point by method, we'll want an 8 in strength, 14 dexterity, 14 constitution, 15 intelligence, 12 wisdom, and 8 charisma. With the plus 2 from our racial bonus and the plus 1 from the telekinetic feat and intelligence, that brings us to an 18 intelligence right at level 1. Which is great because at level 2, we will multiclass out of fighter and into wizard. I agree that thematically, Wanda may actually be closer to a sorcerer, at least at the beginning, or even a warlock if you could be gifted powers from a gem, than say the traditional D&D studying ancient tomes and scrolls wizard. But the last image we have of Wanda is her in full wizard mode, dedicating herself to the study of magic. And mechanically, one particular subclass here offers us a lot of abilities that can't be replicated elsewhere. At Wizard 1, we get Arcane Recovery, so on a short rest, we can recover spell slots equal to half our wizard level, round it up, I'll take that. And of course, we get spell casting and access to the best spell list in the game. We need a spell book. Ours will be the one spell book Wanda's ever had to this point, the Darkhold, the Book of the Damned. We get three cantrips and six first level spells. For our first cantrip, take Firebolt. This is Wanda's primary attack, a tiny bolt of psionic energy that she hurls at enemies, damaging them. Firebolt is a moat of fire that you hurl at an enemy or object. There is an argument that Eldritch Blast, although it's a beam and not a moat, is a stronger analog for Wanda's energy bolts, and there is a build where you take two levels of Warlock and 18 levels of Aberrant Mind Sorcerer and make a solid Scarlet Witch. But I think you'd leave a lot of powers on the table that we get with this version of the build. For the second cantrip, we'll definitely want Mind Sliver. We drive a disorienting spike of a psychic energy into the mind of one creature. The target must succeed on an intelligence saving throw or take 1d6 psychic damage and subtract 1d4 from the next saving throw it makes before the end of your next turn. Any spells that get inside the heads of enemies, throwing them off their game, are going to be right on point for this build. So we have the psionic bolts, we have the mind games. For our final cantrip, I take Mold Earth for some telekinetic abilities to excavate relatively large quantities of loose earth with just an action, make it into shapes or difficult terrain. It's a good cantrip with a lot of uses both in and out of combat. Don't forget that we already have the Maychan cantrip through the telekinetic feat, and if you're wondering why we didn't take Minor Illusion, don't worry, we will get that shortly. For our spells, we're looking for telekinetic abilities, mind control slash influence, or telepathy, illusions, and even old school probability hex style spells that boost odds for us and decrease the odds for enemies. And that is a lot of spells. My recommendations here are catapult, pick up an object and cause it to fly in a straight line up to 90 feet away, classic TK ability, charm person for some mind altering ability, featherfall to catch allies before they smash into the ground, Mage Armor for the psionic energy protection Wanda uses to catch weapons and stop them from striking her. This is mandatory as we have no other means to boost armor class for extended periods of time. And of course Shield for the same reason. Wanda uses this one a lot. And then finally Thunder Wave for those times you're surrounded in combat and need a way out, or you're just emotionally distraught over the death of your brother. 
At levels 2 to 3, we're going to go back to Fighter. At level 2, we get Action Surge, one of the best abilities in the game. That's good right at level 2, all the way through level 20. At level 3, we get our Martial Archetype, and the Psy Warrior is the perfect choice. The Psionic Power feature, which is really three powers bundled into one, is exactly what we need for this build. The feature gives D6 Psionic Dice, totaling twice your proficiency bonus, so we have four dice right now, and six next level. We can use these dice for three features we get at this level. We get Psionic Strike, which allows us to add a Psionic Die plus Intelligence modifier of force damage to an attack made with a weapon. Not a weapon attack. Why Wizards of the Coast made these distinctions is beyond me. I can propel a sword, but not a fist? Is it really going to break the game if I can punch someone with an added D6 plus Intelligence mod? I would ask your DM if they're cool with allowing this, especially since it's almost purely a ribbon feature for us. It really plays into the fists of Psionic Energy that Wanda uses, but we'll almost never use our dice in this ability because we have Protective Field. This allows us to reduce damage to us or a creature within 30 feet by a D6 plus intelligence modifier. And this is an ability that Wanda uses all the time. And finally, we get the big one, telekinetic movement. We can move a large or smaller object or a willing creature within 30 feet up to 30 feet in any direction, or move a tiny object to or from our hand. This really solidifies one of Wanda's primary and most used skills throughout her MCU journey, already at only level four. Usually to get that strong telekinetic base, you have to go all the way to level 9 for the spell telekinesis, and even then, some of the defensive abilities we get here aren't even available to us, which is why we invested in these levels of fighter. Okay, level 5. We'll go back to wizard for a second level, where we get our subclass, our arcane tradition. But before we select that, it should be noted that at level 5, our proficiency bonus has increased, so we have increased our psionic dice by 2, and our cantrips all scale, so Firebolt is now doing 2d10 damage instead of just a single d10. And for our arcane tradition, and the reason we chose wizard over sorcerer and warlock is for the school of illusion. Wanda is an incredibly powerful wielder of telekinesis. What's the telekinetic equivalent of telepath? I don't know. I'll just call her a telekinetic from now on. If that's wrong, correct me in the comments. Despite being an incredibly powerful telekinetic, Wanda's talent for mind-altering illusions is so strong that even Agatha Harkness has trouble believing it. And some of the subclass features we get as an illusionist are the closest we can come to the godly power of creation that she eventually wields. Starting with improved minor illusion here at Wizard 2, we get the minor illusion cantrip, and when we cast it, we can create both a sound and an image with the illusion. Child's play for Wanda, but we all have to start somewhere. For our two new spells, I'd grab Chromatic Orb, which allows us to hurl a 4-inch diameter sphere of energy at a creature, more psionic bolts if we want a little more oomph than the firebolt can give us, for our second spell, both Earth Tremor and Silent Image are viable and useful spells, but I gotta go with Silvery Barbs for the old school Scarlet Witch hex magic feel. Impose bad luck on an enemy by forcing them to re-roll, and good luck on you or an ally by giving them advantage on their next roll. They may still succeed with a re-roll, and you may still fail with advantage, but the probabilities did change. When it comes to classic hex powers, this may be the best spell in the game for matching the hex magic effects. At this point, I'll jump two levels at a time for the most part. That brings us to character level 7 and wizard 4. At wizard 3, we get cantrip formulas, which allows us to change a single cantrip after a long rest. We also get an ASI or feat at level 7. And here we'll take another half feat, telepathic, and use that to bump our intelligence to 19. This allows us to speak telepathically to any creature within 60 feet of us, but they can't respond in kind. We don't actually see Wanda speaking telepathically much at all, but it's certainly within her ability to do so. As mentioned earlier, her telepathy manifests through images and emotions, and with this feat, we're able to cast Detect Thoughts without spell slots or components, which is right on target for Wanda. We get another cantrip and four additional spells, and access to level 2 wizard spells. For our cantrip, Mending is a good choice, as she is able to repair Vision's wounds. For the second level spells, there are a lot of good options here. In WandaVision, Maximoff teleports Resonance, shoves people like Rambo out of the hex with a flex of a wrist, so Vortex Warp is a strong pick here. Suggestion is mandatory for Wanda's mind control powers, and with the telepathic feat, you can speak to someone within range in their head, so no one else can hear you but them. You can suggest the course of activity without anyone else being able to hear it. Levitate allows for some early flight-like abilities and the ability to move creatures or objects up to 500 pounds. Although this does require concentration, our telekinetic movement feature does not, so we can have this spell active and use subsequent actions to activate the telekinetic movement feature without losing concentration on the levitate spell. And finally, Phantasmal Force, an illusion that takes root in the target's mind that is only evident to that creature and is so real that it can actually damage the creature via psychic damage. This is kind of Wanda's thing. Some other options of varying power, Gust of Wind or Warding Wind for some battlefield control and utility. If we can move people, we can move air. Crown of Madness for mind manipulation. 
hold person to lock people in place with telekinesis. Even invisibility works and is well within Wanda's abilities. On to level 9, wizard levels 5 and 6. At this point, our proficiency bonus has increased to plus 4, so our psionic dice now total 8 per long rest, and one coming back to us every short rest. That gives us a lot of uses of telekinetic movement or protective field, which prevents 7.5 damage on average as a reaction, which at this point isn't amazing, so I'd save that for when an attack takes out an ally by less than 10 damage. At Wizard 6, we also get Malleable Illusions, which allows us to use an action to change the nature of illusions that we create if they last one minute or longer. This gives our illusions some life. We're starting to tap into that Scarlet Witch chaos magic that we see in WandaVision. We're not yet altering reality and creating matter with our illusions, but we'll be there soon. For our four new spells, Take Fly, Wanda uses telekinesis to propel herself into the air, and she uses a psionic blast to ease herself back onto the ground. It originally functions sort of like Hulk's leap mixed with Iron Man's propulsion armor, but once she interacts with Agatha and sees her flight, she's able to fly in the more traditional sense. Between this and two other powers she learns simply by watching Agatha, I fully expect Wanda to become even more powerful in future iterations of the character. Once Agatha teaches Wanda her magic, she'll be godlike. For our second spell, take either Fear or Hypnotic Pattern, two illusion spells that play on people's minds right up Wanda's alley. I went with Fear because in Age of Ultron, when she uses her mind tricks on the Avengers, she plays specifically on their worst fears. And even in WandaVision, when she controls the town, the residents are in constant horror while they are controlled. They feel the entirety of Wanda's pain as if it's their own. Then take Major Image, which allows us to create a perfect illusion in a 20-foot cube that includes sight, sound, smell, and appropriate temperature, while continuing to build up that hex power level illusion. And finally, Glyph of Warding for the runes that Wanda learns from Agatha. Eventually we can add some higher level spells if we upcast to better mimic what happened in the finale of the show. Other spells that fit well for Wanda include Enemies Abound to tweak Creature's Mind, Erupting Earth to use Telekinesis to uproot the ground, and considering Wanda literally created her children, one of which has the speed of her brother Quicksilver, taking haste is well within reason. On to level 11. Wizard levels 7 and 8, we get 4th level spells and an ASI or feat. It should also be noted that our cantrip scale at level 11, so Firebolt is now doing 3d10 damage. For our feat, I strongly considered taking Gift of the Gem Dragon to max out intelligence and provide a pretty cool feature called Telekinetic Reprisal. When we take damage from a creature within 10 feet, we can blast them with telekinetic energy and on a failed save do 2d8 force damage and push them up to 10 feet away. Not super strong, but it's a fun ability. If this ability worked for any creature that takes damage so you can protect your allies and, and toss an enemy away from them, I would take this in a heartbeat. But as is, I think there is a better half-feet option for us, and that is Fey Touched. This also maxes our intelligence and gives us access to the Misty Step spell, which Wanda learns from Agatha during their battle. Even the way Wanda's magic looks when she uses it changes as she learns from Agatha. It becomes less energy and flame-like and becomes wispier and smoky. We also get one enchantment or divination spell of our choice, and we have two excellent options for this build. The most obvious would be the hex spell. It adds to our attack damage rolls, which we won't have many, and gives disadvantage on a single ability check of the target. So we get a boost and they get a debuff. Personally, I like Bane here. The power of the debuff is quite a bit stronger. It works on multiple enemies, affects both attacks and saving throws, and the primary part of the spell doesn't require us to make an attack roll. It's the better pick for this build. For our four new spells, and with access to 4th level spells, we start to really dip into the reality altering abilities that wizards can tap into at higher levels. We'll start by picking up Phantasmal Killer, which taps into the nightmares of a creature and creates an illusory manifestation of its deepest fears, causing the frightened condition and 4d10 psychic damage on a failed wisdom save. Then pick up Fabricate, the first of our reality altering spells at this level. This allows us to take raw materials and transmute them into products of the same material, like creating a bridge from trees or maybe a 2020 car into a 1950s car. Along with this, we'll get Hallucinatory Terrain, which allows us to make natural terrain in a 150 foot cube look, sound, and smell like some other sort of natural terrain. However, the tactile characteristics of the terrain remain unchanged, so this spell doesn't quite allow us to warp reality to the degree we need. Baby steps. We're only level 11. And finally, Resilient Sphere which creates a sphere of shimmering force that encloses a creature or object and prevents anything, physical objects, energy, or other spell effects from passing through the barrier, in or out. Other choices can include Private Sanctum, which can be added to a glyph of warding to create a more rune-like effect from the show. Polymorph is an ability that Wanda hasn't really demonstrated yet, but Agatha has, and you can bet Wanda will learn this ability at some point soon. Confusion for that mind-altering power. This spell assaults and twists creatures' minds, spawning delusions and provoking uncontrolled action. And Charm Monster for more mind-control powers. 
At level 13, wizard 9 and 10, our proficiency bonus bumps to plus 5, so we now have 10 psionic dice, and we get the illusory self feature. We can create an illusory duplicate of ourselves as an instant, almost instinctual reaction to danger. When a creature makes an attack roll against us, you can use your reaction to interpose the illusory duplicate between the attacker and yourself. The attack automatically misses you, and then the illusion dissipates. Although this is well within Wanda's power to do, she doesn't really create duplicates of herself in battle like this. I would flavor this more as her telekinetic power, shutting down an enemy attack and forcing it to miss. Note that the feature says when a creature makes an attack roll and not when a creature hits you with an attack. This makes the feature much worse than it would have been otherwise, since the attack may have missed in any case. And you just wasted a feature that you can only use once per short rest. But if you're hurt and can't afford to get hit, and shield isn't an option, go with this ability for a guaranteed miss. Here we get another cantrip and 5th level wizard spells, and these are awesome. For the cantrip, I would take Shape Water, which has some quality utility and fits in the Psionics TK mold. Diving into the 5th level spells, there are so many great options for us. Big B's Hand is a perfect manifestation of Wanda's telekinetic powers, especially when she's angry. Make sure the hand appears as red flaming energy. Synaptic Static allows us to whip out with psychic energy, damaging creatures in a 20-foot sphere and forces them to subtract a d6 from attack rolls, ability checks, and concentration saves for a minute. Telekinesis is of course mandatory as it's one of Wanda's primary powers. We have plenty of TK options to this point, but this gives us a lot of flexibility and a 10 minute duration to manipulate creatures and objects with our mind. And finally, Wall of Force to just lock down enemies if needed. Maybe the best 5th level spell in the game and well within Wanda's skills, it's a must grab for me. Other options at this level are Creation, which allows us to create material objects from nothing but it only lasts for a short period of time. Dominate Person allows us to simply take control of another humanoid and is the pinnacle of mind control on a single creature, and they must obey if they're able. Dream, Gesh, Hold Monster, Modify Memory, Telepathic Bond, Seeming, and potentially even Transmute Rock are all solid to decent options. You really can't go wrong with the spell choices here. Level 15, Wizard 11 and 12. We get another ASI or feat. Here I'm going to recommend the lucky feat. If you're going to play with probabilities, this may be the best feature in the game to do just that. I don't love this feat in general. It's a bit too powerful for me and the weird interaction with disadvantage where you can get super advantage using a lucky die just makes it even worse for me. But it's too good of a feat not to take. With our 6 level spells, I'll start by mentioning Contingency, which is arguably the best 6 level spell. I don't see it as a great analog for any of Wanda's powers, so I'm not going to take it here. But being able to program a spell to be cast at the exact moment you want it to seems well within her powers. So if anyone wants to take the spell right now, I wouldn't fault you for it. I will take Globe of Invulnerability for that ultra powerful spell shielding effect that Wanda can create. Mass Suggestion is mandatory for this build, really capturing the mind control power over multiple people at the same time that Wanda exhibits right from Age of Ultron through WandaVision. For more of that telekinetic and chaos magic creation fun, we can take Move Earth to manipulate the ground and the area and change it to how we see fit. And finally Scatter to move up to 5 creatures to wherever we want within 120 feet, either through telekinesis or teleportation. Wanda can do both. Mental Prison and Programmed Illusion are both thematically and mechanically sound picks at this level. Level 17, wizard levels 13 and 14. We get our final proficiency bonus increase, bringing our psionic energy dice to a total of 12. And we get the illusionist capstone ability, Illusory Reality, which allows us, when we cast an illusion spell of first level or higher, to take one inanimate, non-magical object within the illusion and make that object real. We're creating reality from illusion. Now it only remains real for one minute, whereas Wanda could make the object in person real indefinitely as long as they remained within the Hex Illusion, so this ability isn't nearly as powerful as Wanda's, but it's a really close analog for her Chaos Magic and doesn't break the game. With our level 7 spells, let's take Mirage Arcane. This can make terrain in an area up to one square mile look, sound, smell, and even feel like some other sort of terrain. The terrain's general shape remains the same. Open fields or a road could be made to resemble a swamp, hill, or crevasse. Similarly, you can alter the appearance of structures or add them where none are present. The spell doesn't disguise, conceal, or add creatures, but the illusion includes audible, visual, tactile, and olfactory elements. Any piece of the illusory terrain, such as rock or a stick, that is removed from the spell's area disappears immediately. This is the Hex, or at least as close as we'll come, and with the Illusory Reality feature we have, we can actually make some of these elements real for a minute. Here we can also take Simulacrum to allow us to create a duplicate of a beast or creature, which is essentially what Wanda does to Vision, although it's not quite the same. In Vision's case, he lost his memories of his previous life. In this case, the duplicate has half the normal hit points, none of the original equipment, and obeys our commands. 
Symbol gives us another rune glyph ability with various effects depending on our need. And finally, Reverse Gravity provides a powerful telekinetic type power to uproot a huge area of a 50 foot radius. Some other good spells for this build at this level are Force Cage, Dream of the Blue Veil, which is a power I suspect we'll see from Wanda in the Multiverse of Madness, and Magnificent Mansion. At level 19, Wizard 15 and 16, we get our final ASIR feat, and here I'm going to take Metamagic Adept. I'm taking this solely to appease those who feel strongly that Wanda should be able to use subtle spell to cast her magic, since it's specified by Agatha in-universe that she can cast her spells without incantation. So with this, we'll take Subtle Spell and whatever other meta magic you want. I'll take Quicken Spell, since we only have two sorcery points per long rest. And two times when we really need it, we can use Subtle Spell to cast a spell without somatic or verbal components. For our 8th level spells, I would take Anti-Magic Field for that Agatha Rune magic, but this nerfs your own magic, so it's not a perfect fit, and you should use it sparingly. Clone to create the actual duplicates of creatures like Vision or your children. Dominate Monster for expanded mind control and Mighty Fortress to create a fortress from nothing. And with our final level, level 20 and level 17 wizard, we get two 9th level spells. I'll take Astral Projection because of the final shot in WandaVision. We leave our bodies and enter the astral plane. But the one spell we really want here is Wish. If any fictional character deserves this spell, it's absolutely the Scarlet Witch. With a single utterance, no more mutants. She altered the very fabric of reality, affecting hundreds of thousands of mutants in the process. There is no spell other than Wish that can come close to replicating this type of devastating power. And with that, we have the Scarlet Witch. The ultimate scientist and illusionist with reality warping, mind bending powers, and arguably one of, if not the most powerful character in the MCU. Let me know what you'd have done differently in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, share, all the YouTube things, and I'll see you all here next time for build number 7.